Hello, today we're going to be focusing on language arts, answering literal, inferential, and evaluative questions. Today we are going to define these three terms, and we're going to do a little bit of practice, making sure we understand these definitions. And then we are going to do some practice finding and using these terms in a text, and then finally we're going to use these terms even more in an actual text hands-on. So let's get started. First of all, let's get the definition straight. First one is literal. Literal is something you can find directly in the text. You don't need to ask it, you don't need to ask someone, you can find it right there in the text on your own. Inferential questions are using the text clues in and around the text in order to figure it out. You might not know it right off the bat, but if you look around a little bit, you can figure it out. An evaluative is making a judgment or forming an opinion. How do you feel about a certain, su certain subject? And here's a quick definition check to make sure you understand what we're doing. And we, all you have to do is read these ones. Use text clues and prior knowledge. I think that one would be inferential. So I'm going to click on the name and drag it all the way over. Found directly in text, that would be literal. Click that and drag that one over. And then making a judgment or opinion is evaluative dragging that one over, and to see if we're right, click check, and we got all check marks, so we are good to go. On to the next one. Here's an example of what we're going to do finding literal, inferential, and evaluative questions and answers in a text. So Hannah walked home from school on a cool Tuesday afternoon. As she walked, Hannah noticed all the pretty colors of the leaves, red, yellow, orange. Some of the leaves were still on the tree, but some were on the ground. Many times, Hannah would spend too much time looking at nature that she forgot to look both ways before crossing the street. This was one of those days. So on to the question part. And here's the story once more. The question we have is, where was Hannah walking? How can we figure out where Hannah was walking? Would it be in the text or something we have to figure out on our own? Or is it something where we're making an opinion? So where was Hannah walking? If we reread the text, Hannah walked home from school. We can find here, right in here, that it says Hannah was walking home from school. So where was Hannah walking? She was walking home from school. And since we found it directly in the text, that would be an example of a literal question. And next question is, what season was it? So again, here's the story once more. And if we reread parts of it again, we're going to see if we can answer this question, what season was it? It says, she walked home, she noticed all the pretty colors of the leaves. They were red and yellow and orange. And while some were on the tree, uh, all, some were leaves were also on the ground. And we do, it doesn't really say what season it is, does it? But we can read this text and figure out some clues to lead us to the conclusion that the season is actually fall or autumn. And we can find that in here. She walked home, the pretty colors of the leaves. They were red, yellow, and orange. And some leaves were on the tree, but some were on the ground. So we're using some of that knowledge that's already in our heads about what seasons are like. And we're also using some of the clues in the text. And the final question is, what did Hannah do wrong? And again, here's the story. And how do we know what did Hannah do wrong? So if we look more in the story, it says many times Hannah would spend too much time uh, looking at nature, noticing all the things in nature, that she would have forgot to look, look both ways before crossing the street. And if I were to make an opinion about this, I would say that you're always supposed to look both ways before you cross the street. So the what did Hannah do wrong? She didn't look both ways before she crossed the street. And why is that? And I believe that one is an evaluative question. And why is that an evaluative question? It's because it's asking you to form a judgment or an opinion. Hannah didn't look both ways before she crossed the street, and I think that's wrong. So I'm forming an opinion, making a judgment about that decision. And here we have another fun activity, making sure we understand these definitions of literal, inferential, and evaluative. So if we press start up here, what is going to happen is here it's going to give us the definition of one of those terms, and we're going to have to click on the letters to find, to spell out the word literal, inferential, or evaluative. So it's on a time limit, so one letter is going to be each box. We're going to have to click really fast before the timer runs out. So here's a sample of how it's going to go. Click start. And answer by using clues in the text and other information. So that one would be inferential, I believe. 
So if I click I and F E R E N T I A L. Inferential. Excellent. And I got a score of 161. And then we would go on to the next one, but to save time, we're just going to skip out onto the next slide. And our next activity is going to be using an actual text. And we're going to be using the book Polar Bears by Gail Gibbons. The story just gives you a lot of nonfiction information about polar bears and where they live and what they do. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to use the book and write two of our own literal questions, one inferential question, and one evaluative question. So we're going to read through the text, and we, as the readers, are going to make up our own questions and share with uh, other groups in the class and see if they can answer our questions. So again, it's writing two literal questions, one evaluative and one inferential. And by the end of class today, we will have defined literal, inferential, and evaluative questions. And we have also found those types of answers to these questions in text and in actual text, and we've had to make up our own questions. So we've had seen both sides of the answering and question situation. So you all did a great job today, and thank you so much.